um, the traditional work calendar would be increased from 181 days to 183 days for the 2021 uh, calendar school year. I mean, for the school year. I'm sorry. Next slide. Good evening, board and superintendent. Uh, it's uh, Matt Turkey, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. So our professional learning occurred on September 1st and 2nd. And um, just to note, this is the first robust professional learning we've had for all teachers since 2014-15 school year. So it's been six years since we've had professional learning for all teachers. And what this consisted of was seven different modules, three of which were live and four of which were recorded and asynchronous. So I'm gonna start off with the live ones. The live ones focused on instructional technology is one. Another focused on universal design for learning and lesson planning so that we could reach all students within all of our classes. And then the third live session was on social and emotional learning mini lessons to ensure that we can meet students' social and emotional learning needs. The asynchronous lessons, um, sorry, sessions, there was one on Google Classroom use and organization. Um, we had two on scope and sequence, one in the scope and sequence in math and the other in the scope and sequence in ELA, English Language Arts. And then our final one was on the common district assessments. The way that these were organized is that there would be a session um, which would be interactive and then there would be time after that for teachers to collaborate and process around the session and thinking, well, what does that mean for me and my content area and what should I start doing with that overseen by each principal? Each of the sessions kind of basically end up being braided together. And then if you think about, well, what would a teacher need to know to start distance learning on the right foot? Well, they would need to know how to use Google Classroom and how to organize it properly. They would need to know about how do I use instructional technology and how do I build relationships with students in using that technology? How do I meet the needs of all my students using you know, universal design for learning and the scope and sequence in math and ELA? And then how do I know what my students have learned by the common district assessments? And that's in the way which they all get braided together. And um, that's it for the professional learning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turkey. Do we have any public comments on this item? Sorry, President Ryan, there's still a couple more slides. Sorry. Okay. I believe this is Ms. Thank Ramos. You. Yes. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I'm just trying to unmute here. Um, so this is just basically the cost uh, per AB 1200. We have to disclose what the cost of this, uh, any negotiated agreement is when there is um, a change in salaries or benefits or any, any kind of compensation to employees. And in this case, even though it's just one time, we still have to say where is the funding coming from and disclose that it's not ongoing and the impact to the budget, of course. So there's two impacts. Um, originally, this was going to be um, professional development for online learning. I, I'm, I'm being very general here. Uh, and so obviously it met the criteria for use of our mitigation funds. And so, and then however, because of the change to the calendar, it triggers other changes to other positions also within the bargaining unit that have to be treated differently. And those positions are not necessarily part of the two-day training. They're just going to be, when they, when they provide services to the district, such as substitutes or stipends, and there's a whole category, um, their rate of pay gets adjusted by um, a pro the proportionate increase that the other category did. So in this case, it turned out to be like a one point something percent uh, for these stipends and these substitute salaries. Um, and so we don't know exactly what the impact's going to be right until the year is over. They have to actually earn those wages um, through activities. But if we're assuming that 
the all of the positions in that second category, um, the budgets that are currently set up for them, if we assume that that's exhausted, this is what it will cost uh, in that particular category. So going back up to that first bullet, um, for the two days of the professional development that qualifies under the learning loss mitigation funds, it will be about 2.3 million. We have three 3.4 million awarded under this particular category. And why this one, how, why are we being so specific? Because um, our other funds that are going to expire in December, uh, these wages will not necessarily be, we, we, it's gonna be difficult to try to use those. It'll be far more complicated because they're built into the salary schedule and they're going to be earned throughout the whole year. We just need to wait until the end of the year and then just you know, do a charge back to this fund. Versus if we it would have just been a two day payout, you know, then clearly we would have used the other bigger chunk of funds. So that's why they, these funds don't expire until next year. And so these are the funds we're going to use and not impact our unrestricted general fund. The second category is the stipends that I talked about. And because these are not associated with any kind of learning loss mitigation, um, we don't know yet, right? Because they haven't earned these. Uh, right now we have have to assume that they would be paid for with unrestricted general fund dollars. And so because we cannot increase expenses and incur more, increase our deficit, we need to look within our own funds and find a way to fund these. So the category where we, we expect to, that we will not use it completely is our substitute budget line item. We currently have 7 million, and this is assuming that you know we will use all of our 7 million for the entire year um, and we're, we're not sure if we're going to do that or not. So that was the budget that we're going to reduce by the amount that's actually used in this category. I hope that was clear. Um, and so, and this is part of AB 1200. You really have to disclose how you're going to pay for it. What is the budget and what's the impact of the budget and, and, and really provide evidence that you have funding available for this. So this next slide is just a recap. Um, it's the, uh, the spreadsheet, if anybody can advance the slide, please. I don't know who's controlling that. Um, anyway, it's in your packet, and um, it's it's basically just the the little the spreadsheet that shows these categories of, of funds and how you know they will be used. Um, and that's pretty much it. Is there anything else, uh, uh, President Ryan? Yeah. President Ryan, I just remembers. I wanted to make sure that. You're aware, and I think you're sensing it. We are having some technical difficulties, um, including uh, the fact that we're having to record the Zoom um, because we weren't able to make uh, this portion of our open session uh, live, if you will. So we will be uploading the video. Um, I will make sure that we're talking also to legal counsel in terms of uh, any any impact and whether we have to come back. Um, once we address those uh, those technical difficulties, but um, I, I do want to make sure that, if possible, uh, board members can uh, see uh, the calculation slide. If Mr. Flores is hearing, or if we can do it through your screenshot um, or something, uh, Mr. Basio, um, I'm not sure um, what 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 what's what's happening, but we are having some challenges, um, technical difficulties. So. Um, oh, we are live now, um, but I, I am concerned about, uh, I, I do want to make sure that um, our community can see the actual calculation of this. So is there a reason why we're not able to move the slide? There. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. And so here's the breakdown. I think this will explain it a little better than what I try, how I try to explain it. So the first three categories, those are the groups of, of teachers that were slated to attend the two-day training, and uh, they're organized by calendar. So those were the calendars that were adjusted to add two days to their annual calendar. And so obviously they will get paid over, you know, over the course of the year. Um, and then the second category are all of the other positions that automatically get triggered, um, whatever increases those calendars above get or changes, they happen to the, the, the categories that are listed below. And I'm sure Mr. Um, Bosier can explain that a little clearer than I did knowing the agreement better, but for us in the fiscal side of the house, we just need to look at the fiscal impact and, and which positions are going to be impacted and then go back and pull these out 
apply the increase and then um, identify the funding. And so that's why you're gonna see all the details because in AB 1200, again, you have to disclose where are you getting the money to pay for this? And is it one time, is it ongoing? And what's the impact to your unrestricted general fund uh, balance? And in this case, there really isn't other than a change between um, budgets is what we're doing here. So we're taking from one budget to pay for that, that second half of, of this expense. So for those members of the public that are just tuning in, this is a special board meeting of the Board of Education for Sacramento City Unified School District. We're hearing one item, one agendized item pertaining to the two days of professional development um, that were arrived at in the MOU between Sac City Unified School District and the Sacramento City Teachers Association to ensure that we can calculate and, and have timely payments payment for those two days of professional development, we're coming together to take action on this expenditure. Superintendent Aguilar, is there anything else on this item before I ask for public comment and then board member questions and comments? No, that uh, is the end of the, of the discussion uh, from staff, uh, President Ryan. So uh, we'll turn it over back to you for um, uh, any public comment as well as any questions from uh, our board. Deputy Superintendent Allen, do we have any public comments on this single agendized item? Uh, President Ryan, there is no public comment on this item. Okay. So with that, we'll take any board member questions and comments. I did have one very quick question, um, and that was related to um, total number of teachers uh, that took advantage of the two days of professional development um, proportionate to the total number of our workforce. I'm hoping that Mr. Turkey is still available. Looks like he, he is on mute. Um, if we can't answer that right now, we can have it yeah, come. We over. absolutely can. Uh, President Ryan, follow up on that, um, because of course uh, we will be tracking who attended uh, those, those days of professional development. Again, I, I do want to just uh, clarify again for members of our community um, that um, uh, uh, that in this case, uh, we were excited uh, to be able to have those two days of professional learning. It's been a long time since uh, we've had an opportunity to provide um, uh, and start the, the year front loading it with uh, some professional development, um, but we will provide uh, that information to the board um, um, because it's a, it's, a, it's a good question and it's an important question. And Superintendent Aguilar, for members of the public who might want to know why this is the first professional learning that has occurred in many years within Sac City Unified, do you have a quick um, you know, one sure. minute answer to that? Well, as you can see um, here, uh, board members, um, this is sort of, this is what the cost is for two days of professional learning. Um, and we thought that it was critical to the extent possible uh, to prepare for uh, this new way of learning, distance learning, that we do as much as we could so that our students were receiving the highest quality of teaching and learning um, with our teachers, um, given that this is a new space of, of teaching uh, and of learning for our community. Um, um, but we also wanted to capitalize to the extent possible. You can see that in some cases you cannot use only uh, CARES Act dollars, um, so it's, it's, it's always been um, uh, a, a difficult position to be in um, because it is a significant investment uh, to make, and I, I hope that this is, um, this is the kind of investment that we will be able to make in the future, um, which is why it's so critical that we stay focused on addressing some of the budget structures that are in place today that make it difficult for us to invest uh, the way that we were able to do this year. Um, so I'm hoping that this isn't, uh, uh, as, 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 as Mr. Turkey uh, mentioned, uh, something that we won't see uh, until a few years from now, so. Thank you. Do we have other board member comments or questions, if I can just see hands? Board member Murawski, followed by board member Garcia. Thank you, President Ryan. Um, just a, 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 I think a quick question for Ms. Ramos on the, the funding source. I just wanted to clarify and uh, understand a little better how the 
how the payments are actually going out and, and why we can't use uh, CARES Act funds that expire in December for those payments? Because of the way they're paid out, um, those two days are built into the salary schedule, so in, and, and they're not paid up front. So let's say they, they happen September 1 and um, September 2nd. We're not paying those full two days at the end of September when payroll hits. It's being paid out over time in their monthly you know, um, salary. So, so not that we can't, Member Morawski, but it, you know, it's just we, we've been wrestling with this because it's, it's, it's a little complicated. If we pay, use, if we wanted to use, if we could use, wanted to use, uh, decided to use the December expired, um, expiring resource, we would need to calculate the months of um, September, October, November, of course, because December is, ends in December 31st and that doesn't qualify. It's, it's this really mm -hmm. weird um, award. Anyway, we would only be able to charge those months to the expiring resource. And um, not that this is a reason why we shouldn't do it, but um, the amount of, of work, just to give you an example, each of our um, positions can be um, as many as maybe 20, 30 lines because they could be, you know, um, split between sites or they could be, they're, they're just doing different activities. Our, our, our account code structure is just very lengthy. And then you have to add into that all the benefit lines. So we were just trying to find the simplest way um, to charge back uh, a restricted resource, but not that we couldn't, it just wouldn't be 100% because the other remaining months, of course, are after the December 30th um, deadline. I hope that was clear, I know that was. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was clear. I'm just, I, I guess I am, I don't understand the accounting structure well enough to, to know whether it is, you know, a, a, an efficient use of, of time and resources to try to charge back to that funding source that's expiring. But I would, I would ask that we try to, to do that. Um, I, you know, I, I am, I am um, a little concerned uh, and I know we're going to have more uh, conversation about this, but I am a little concerned with the, the, uh, volume of, of that, you know, just the size of that um, pot of money that is up till now expiring December 31st. And I think we, we really should be looking to maximize that funding source. Um, so I, I guess just a, a technical question. If we, if we approve this now, does it, does it mean that you would still have the flexibility to uh, to charge back the other funding source, or are we approving uh, the funding source with the um, the MOU action? You are approving the funding source with the MOU action, but it doesn't mean that you know you couldn't revise the budget later on and come back. But also know that um, what we what we're going to do then is trade and expense, right? Whatever we were planning to spend by December thirtieth we'll look for something that, that doesn't have to be done before then and that we can you know, push that one out. I mean, the other way around, I'm sorry. We can advance another um, expense that we were planning to spend in, in the spring with this other this resource and apply it to the December 30th. Our goal is, if, if that's the concern and I'm not sure what it is, but I, and I don't wanna make any assumptions, but we, we intend to try to find um, items that we need or services that we need so that we don't send back any of those dollars, especially now that we know we have them on hand. We were worried before because, right. you know, we were waiting, but now we have them. So that kind of changes things a little for us. And, um, and so, yeah, so, you, but, so you're approving, yes, the funding source today, but doesn't mean that you can't come back with the budget revision. Okay. Okay. Well, I would, you know, I, I'd be happy to um, to move approval, um, and just I would ask you to to look at whether whether we can come back and uh, whether it makes more sense to to charge it to the December thirtieth expiring funding source. Just because I think you know anything we can do to maximize our flexibility, um, we should. So, um, with that, happy to happy to move it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Member Morawski. Excellent point. Member Garcia. 
Um, yes, thank you. So I, I had a similar question. Um, so I'm glad to hear um, a little bit more clarity on um, on the reasons why this particular funding source was identified, but also um, my concerns that whether it's an internal um, sort of process or capacity in terms of um, ensuring that we that we spend those other dollars first, right? The ones that's, uh, that are going to expire in just a few months. So I'm glad to hear that that you're still looking for ways to spend those down um, uh, and, and in a way that uh, we don't have to return any um, dollars. So, um, but, um, so anyway, so that, that's, that's um, that comment. And um, so I did have a, a question about the remaining balance. So if, um, let's see, so the total award is 3.4 million and of that 2.3 is um, essentially what is being, um, uh, spent here and the balance being 1.8. What, what happens to that 1.8? Does it stay within, um, I guess, a category of professional development or does it go back to some general fund of some sort? No, I, remember, that's a very good question. That That's the allocation for one of the buckets of the learning loss mitigation funds. As you may recall, there were like three different allocations within the one award. And so this is the one award that has the, the longer expiration date. It doesn't expire December 30th. So because of the way the, this $2.3 million is being paid out, we were just looking for a resource that didn't expire so quickly because these are not going to be fully earned until June, right? That's the last payroll of the year. And so um, that's what we we're trying to do is to match the expense with, the, with, the, uh, with, the, with an award. So that balance is simply the, the balance remaining in this particular category of this award. It hasn't been committed yet. As I, we shared at a previous board meeting, we were talking about, okay, these are all of our COVID uh, relief funds. And this is what we've committed so far, what we've spent so far, and here's our remaining balance. This category, this of, of award is one of those um, unallocated um, amounts that we were you know, waiting to see what would happen next year and um, how we would need to use those funds in the future. Okay, um, okay, that's good to hear. And then um, just one last question. Um, the, the other stipends, the, the funding source being and the um, unrestricted general fund, I know it's not a lot, 120,000, but uh, what, what kind of professional development did these, um, I guess, um, uh, the people in these positions receive that is not eligible for to use CARES dollars. So I'm, if it's professional development because of COVID, I'm just not sure what you can charge it to, to the CARES dollars. Yeah, I'll turn it over to, to my colleague here, Matt. My understanding is that they did not, or they were not included in the professional development, but let me, yeah, let me let someone else answer that one. Thank you. Um, yeah, go ahead. Matt. Would, would somebody repeat the question, please? So I'm, I'm just wondering why the um, 120,000 is not eligible for CARES dollars. Um, so if, if they receive professional development, why, why can't you charge it to the, to the other um, funding source? This looks like to me like it's the, um, the, there's the stipends, which people would receive anyway. So, um, the stipends which you receive to be an athletic director and so on and a department chair, those are yearly things and they're not dependent on, on, uh, on COVID. Okay. Correct. So th those costs weren't associated to the, or with the professional development directly. They're just these trigger items for those amounts of stipends that get triggered and increased when we uh, increase the, the regular teacher salary schedule. So when we extended the salary, the days uh, uh, that they work in the year, their salaries went up. And then the formula for the stipends and for substitutes is tied to that amount. So even though, even though they, they didn't participate in professional development? Well, um, so some of those folks may have very well participated. Um, but you know, the high school have. athletic directors, the, um, the folks who get other stipends and so forth, they may have participated, but they're getting an extra little pay 
bump um, just because of the way that we extended the year to, to capture these professional development days. Does that make sense? Um, it does now, yeah. So, um, and I think it goes back to um, board member Ryan's um, earlier question in terms of the participation um, from the overall employees. Um, and so it, I'm sorry, one, one more question because I think this is happening under uh, child development as well is, are those triggers or or did they, no, they participated in professional development. That's why the CARES dollars are being used that, or the um, uh, learning loss. Okay, um, it kind of makes sense. Um, it makes a lot more sense, but, um, but it's still um, an interesting sort of formula or trigger. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Member Garcia. Looks like we don't have any other board member. Oh, we have the final board member question from Member Pritchett. No, no question, just moving to approve. So we had a motion by Member Murawski and a second by Member Pritchett. Thank you. Um, I believe this is a roll call vote, student preferential vote. Um, I think Mr. Barron said I can't give a preferential okay. vote on this item. Thank you, Board Member Shake. Superintendent? Yes, thank you. Member Vang? Yes. Member Ryan? Yes. Member Pritchett? Yes. Member Murawski? Yes. Member Minnick? Aye. Member Wu? Aye. Member Garcia? Aye. With that, the motion carries. Um, hearing no other items on this agenda, this concludes the board special board meeting of the Sacramento City Unified School District's Board of Education. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, everyone. Thank you.